Support the Amigos podcast on Patreon or PayPal and receive cool perks and rad swag. Visit our page at everythingamiga.com slash support. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about Vegetables Deluxe. All right, man. Yeah. Aaron, what are some of your favorite <laughs> oh, That's the most expired up I've ever been about vegetables right there. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. You know, I want to dive deep into your relationship with the crunchy legume. Mm-hmm. So tell me, what, what are some of your favorite vegetables? Well, I like, uh, I like your green beans, your peas. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, let me ask you a question about green beans because this is important. Do you like the garden grown green beans or do you like a good canned green bean? Because they both. taste different. I like them both, man. Mm. Uh, uh, and now, you know, the uh, the grandparents used to grow the beans in the old yard. My mom and dad still occasionally will grow some green beans on the old back porch, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I like canned ones too. It doesn't matter. They're a vehicle for salt often, let's be facts. Yes. Yes. And butter to a certain degree. I like your corn. Got to have that. Do you uh, like uh, do you like off the cob or do you just like it in the in the can? I like anything that's not cream. I don't like. Don't the like cream. the cream corn. Okay. How does that even exist? Well, I mean, what the hell is that? It. I, I've often wondered. You know, because to some extent, it makes sense why we have pickled things because pickling is a way to preserve food. Yeah. When you add cream to a vegetable, what are you getting out of that? What's the What's the end Sick? game? I yeah. don't know. I've never understood that. Makes it makes it go bad quicker. I don't know. I don't know. It's Stuff weird, and I don't like it. I will say this, speaking of vegetables, like I don't like tomato soup, but I love cream of tomato soup, right? Oh, so just, a bit of a hypocrite. Bit just of a hypocrite saying thing. that makes me ill. It's one of those mm. things my mom fed me, and I didn't know what was in it, and she'd load it up with crackers, like, man, this is some good eating. And then, like, years passed, and finally, I'm like, I went out, I remember going out to the store and buying some, like, tomato, you know, tomato soup, pouring it in a bowl. I'm like, this sucks. What did I do wrong? And I was like, oh, yeah, you got to add a bunch of milk to it. I was like, whoa. <laughs> but it worked, you know. It does. You know, what I've discovered about soup is I can palate almost anything. If you, scr- if you, you like, if you crumble up enough of those, uh, what do they call them? Like zesty crackers, those saltines. Yeah. You just crumble them up until the soup becomes just a solidified mass. Then you shovel that into your face with a spoon. You put enough crackers in it to where you can turn the bowl upside down. That's right. If it right. all stays in there, you're golden. I'm the same <laughs> way with like chicken noodle soup. I load that up with the old crackers. Yeah. 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 Now, are are you? Would you say that you go to Panera Bread often? I would say that I hate Panera Bread and never go there. Really? That's right. So you've never experienced a, a bread bowl of soup before? No, I have been to Panera Bread, but I don't go there now. Uh, mm. You know, I've never. Was there not, something that happened? Yeah, they're overpriced. Their menu stinks. Their help sucks. And the fact that the end as as the last kick in the pants. After you pay them a thousand dollars for your meal, they they rip a chunk of bread off a loaf with their bare hands and just throw it in the bag. That's that's <laughs> does that how's that for you? Does that do it for you? <laughs> well, I'm paying I, for I, that. <laughs> Get that out. You know, I the thing about Panera is is that it's the only place you can go to get a good bread bowl. Where else are you going to go? Uh, that's not the only place you can go for a bread bowl. You know, like uh, there's a lot of Mexican restaurants that have the bread bowl, what? places like that. You're yeah. out of your mind. I believe the, you... uh, I think the old uh, whiskey. Listen, taco in Mexico has the they don't bread. even eat bread. Oh, they it's eat all it. tortillas over there. Oh, they got bread. What's the deal with bread bowls? By the way, I think about KFC has a bread bowl. Uh, but anyways, I don't get bread bowls. I want bowls or bread. I don't. Why is it other stuff made out of bread? Why don't we eat with bread forks and spoons, bread napkins, bread everything? So the idea. Because this idea has always captivated me. The whole, like, the food is in itself is its own package, you know? Like, think about how great it would be if you could eat the packaging for every food that you ate. Yeah, but you drop the packaging. You know what I'm saying? You grab the package with your grubby, dirty hands and carry the package in. The, the cat might lick the package. You want to eat that? And You're think sort of, of the turning me off made of, this idea that I've had now. If it was made of food... You would have ants on the package. You would have all kinds of critters on the package. That's, no, horrible. That's a horrible idea, Boat. I mean, yeah, it would be environmentally safe. What you got to come up with is some sort of package that's edible, 
but no one else, no other animals want that dirt doesn't stick to. I don't know what it is. You know, mm. I'm sure it's soy based or something. I, I think they call that candy corn. I like no, well, I like candy corn personally, but, but I'm just a big think fat about guy. it. Dirt doesn't stick to it. Animals don't like it. It's candy corn. How are you going to shake corn candy corn into a package? What you just flatten it out? You take a rolling pin. What is candy corn? <laughs> is there, there's no there's no corn in there? There's it's just, no corn. It's a bunch in of there. sugar and some uh, something to make it stick together. Xanthan gum. Is that what that is? I think that's what that Xanthem? is. Xanthan. Yeah. Sounds like a Batman villain. It. <laughs> it does. I was just thinking that. <laughs> All right, Aaron. Let's leave this uh, scintillating conversation. What? And move over. We got some big news. We got two big articles this week over at everythingamiga.com. We do. We have big. They're huge articles, but if I may say. I, I, actually, I haven't read, haven't read either one of them because I didn't know they were up there. So uh, they're on my list. The first one here, the dunk, our good buddy the dunk is at it again. He's got a review here, the ultimate floppy emulator. Uh, this is a gimmick from uh, our good friend over in Espanol, Spain, Edu Arana. Maker this, of the Unamiga, correct? Yes, it is, <clears throat> among other things. This is a gimmick that plugs into the into your uh, into your uh, floppy drive connector on the back, and then you can put a USB up in it, and then bam, there you go. Uh, it's sort of like a... Uh, uh, sort of like a, the GoTech cut out the middleman, and this is mm. what they came up with right here. It's a pretty, it's a pretty wild looking unit. This is the first time I've really seen one up close like that. Look at that big buzzer or something on there. It's kind of wild. That's a rotary knob. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. I liked it better when it was a buzzer. You know, because I, <laughs> I can just picture it. I thought I was making just a floppy randomly noise. Just randomly, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, the problem, of course. What, what do you think the problem with this thing is? Both? The problem is, is that it sticks out of the back of your computer. Much like the RF adapter, which uh, just invites invites pain. Yeah. So what you got to get here is, well, if you could do like, there's two options here. My favorite one is from Doug, Doug Tenmark, who just turned his entire unit backwards and stuck it. In. That's the way he does it. <laughs> That's the way Doug and, Doug. and the funny thing about it, Doug's like, yeah, I'll leave it like this anyway. He's like, access all this crap. So you could turn your whole unit around backwards. The other angle is to get some sort of uh, like a floppy cable, basically an extension cable. And you, mm -hmm. uh, regardless, you're probably going to want to put this thing in some sort of case. There's a lot of exposed circuit board there. Wouldn't want anything to to happen to it. I don't yeah, think. I don't know. Do you leave a lot of exposed circuit boards around in your oh, equipment? Do I? Are you kidding me? I'm not going to waste money unexposed circuit boards. This thing is just set out. Mm. I see this thing's got a switch on it here. Uh, I'm assuming, yeah, that's a that's a drive zero, drive one smart switch there. Uh, so I guess you could theoretically you could probably mount this internally if you wanted to, or I don't guess it would make the external drive drive zero. That'd be nice too if you could do that. So it still looks pretty good. Ed has got some very clever stuff, uh, and this looks like uh, looking over it, the circuit board looks pretty simple. So there's probably not a lot of uh, pitfalls in that department, and it looks like he's got a. Uh, uh, a decent little display on that. It looks like a pretty good unit. Yeah, so the, yeah, the man. The dunk is going to check this sucker out. I will say, I like when the dunk looks over. So we can look here at the back, at the back end of this, just to summarize it. He's, the dunk writes, a great device, recommended. Very easy to use, flexible, uh, great for data preservation. Could use a case. Good one, Boat. And lastly, Thank you. he'd like to see a version that's built into the Unamiga. Well, there you go. So... <laughs> That That's wouldn't be a bad there. idea, though, right? I mean, could, would you th well, as an Unamiga owner yourself, do you think the Unamiga would benefit from such a device? Well, I'll tell you something, Boat. I, uh, <laughs> you know, I, uh, I guess so. I, it would probably be pretty good. I'm not happy with the Unamiga right now, uh, but uh, once I get over it and I go back there and reflash it and try to salvage it, I, I mean, it's a great little device. Uh, and I, it does have built-in... Uh, it does have the built-in, you know, it, I mean, really, you don't need this. It's got a sort of a built-in GoTech already, so you really don't need this. Mm. Uh, this that So it's technically, it's already there, I guess, to mm. summarize. Anyway, there you go. We got another article up here, too, Boatster. Uh, this one here from our good buddy, Jack Flack. Rob yes. O'Hara in the chat. I think Dunk might be in there, too, actually. Uh, this is Auto Duel. And look who wrote this bad boy. Did you see this? 
by Lord I saw British that. and Chuckles. <laughs> and this, <laughs> I want to know: Does Chuckles have an adjoining castle to Lord British at this time? That tells me that Texas. that's the jester at the, at the castle. <laughs> He's jumping around trying to entertain Lord British. Uh, I. It's funny that that he would put this up because we actually were talking about this uh, in Car Wars a while back. Car Wars was an old Steve Jackson. Uh, sort of a pen and paper game. I wouldn't call it a role playing game. It was more of a, you know, one of those wacky little games from the seventies where you would mm-hmm. race cars. I've actually played it a few times, and it was fun. It's a fun little game. Uh, they fleshed out the uh, Car Wars universe quite a bit uh, after I jumped out of it. I think they actually turned it into a full fledged role playing game. Uh, this game I am familiar with came out from Origin, and this looks like the Flax are just going over. Man, I haven't seen these screens for I can't tell you how long. Uh, so both. you played this back in the day? I had a cup of coffee with it. Mm. You know, I, the the video game. But you version. you played you played the pen and paper version more. I played than you both. Did the, the, I played yeah. I played them both. But it's been I mean this game came out. God, I don't know when it came out. Anyway, if you're into uh, if you're into auto dueling stuff, or if you're into Car Wars, or if you're just into uh, some awesome writing. Uh, that only the flat can provide. Give this a whirl. It's pr- it's going to be some good stuff there. I, I'm going to read that directly after we finish the show tonight. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, Aaron. Let's move on over to the Amigos Retro Gaming YouTube channel. A lot All of action right, on here this week for sure. Let's see where we left off here, Boat. Um, gosh, where did we leave off? I'm looking over our list here. Um, okay, so I guess I should mention what me and the Brent got up to on Sunday. We rolled the Super Nintendo boat. Uh, yes. And, you know, I, I told everyone I was going to try to take some sort of European ex, uh, exclusive. And Looking back some. on that, would you have changed your opinion, <laughs> given given the relative popularity of no, this No, I'm episode? glad I did it, and I'll tell you why. Hey, we both like Archer McLean, right? Uh, I like Drop Zone, and so Super Drop Zone was not bad. I mean, it wasn't crap. Uh, it wasn't crap. No. It was, uh, I would say it's a subpar for that system. You know, the yes. Super Nintendo is capable of much more. And it's also sort of a subpar drop zone, too. They could have done a lot of things to make it a lot better. They could have. They could have. Uh, Brent picked Michael Jordan's uh, uh, Trouble in the... Uh, or Chaos, Chaos in the Windy, in the Windy City. City. Now, I know everyone buried this game, and I don't know if you listened to the show. Yes, but, I but did. But I did not bury this, and neither did Brent. Uh, we actually, Brent actually gave a pretty pretty well thought out defense of this game. Yeah. I was, uh, you know, I'm still no fan of this game. I still think it's it's not very much fun. But the way that Brent explained it, it and especially, you know, as as we've talked about on the Discord, the whole seventh worst game of all time yeah. by Nintendo Power. <laughs> no possible way this is the. This seventh is not worst on the list. This actually no. is an okay game. I mean, right, right. And the thing is, you've got this, Mike. I, I saw some people like, oh, they just stuck Michael Jackson there. No. This I can guarantee you this game was built for Michael Jordan because it's got all kinds of crazy stuff that they did. I mean, there's a lot of uh, Jordan-esque content stuffed in here. Sure. And and plus, I mean, is it stupid? Oh, yeah. But, I mean, also, so is the Cowboys of Moon Mesa or the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There's a lot of dumb games that revolve around an idiotic premise. I don't see why people think it's so stupid for a basketball star to go out and try to rescue people, but they're totally fine with a, a large talking cow doing it or a large uh, mutated reptile. Yeah, I mean, good lord, it's a video game. It's all stupid crap. Come on, it's all stupid crap. I think that should be the tagline for video games. Listen, you, you've played Ninja Baseball Batman. If trust me, there is nothing goofier on earth than that. And I mean, and I'm not saying this game's as good as that, but I'm saying I, anything goes. All that's the whole point of video games. Yeah. And I liked it. I'm no huge Jordan fan either. I mean, he was a great basketball player, but I mean, he, as a guy, he's sort of a goof. Boy, you've been down on basketball players all evening. That's not true. What's I like tons that? of basketball players. I just, I mean, he's not my favorite. But You're all down on the bark? You're down on the Jordan? Oh, listen, the bark's way worse than the Jordan. Mm. All that said, Boat, I recommend giving uh, Trouble in the Windy City or Chaos. I mean, it's, not the, it's not that bad. Uh, moving down the line here. We mentioned on the show, Brent went over this sort of like top 20 Super Nintendo games of all time list. And one of the games on it was this game called Tetris Attack that we'd never heard of. And right. Brent's like, he's like, how the hell did this get on the list? Well, Jack Flack to the rescue. He went, he got up on his stream. He played the heck out of this game. And it yeah, looked this pretty is good. One, this is one that I, I, I'd never played before. And I really? was sort of scratching my head too. Uh, I, I just, you know, a lot of those Tetris games, there were a million of them that came out. 
and uh, I, I missed a lot of them. So uh, I'm glad that Flack went back and played this. I'm going to check it out. Yeah, and a good stream as always. Had a great time. <laughs> I'm not sure I've ever seen a bad stream from the Flack. No, it was, it was no. good stuff. Uh, plus added bonus content where he just does stuff that has nothing to do with video games, which I'll, he, I believe this one. Yeah, it was. He showed off a bunch of his SNES co cart copiers, Boat. Yeah, yeah. He's that sort of awesome. famous for those. He's got plus the, some, uh, he the Super Wildcat some, and all that stuff. He showed some footage or some photos from him displaying these at like a show. It was really interesting. Mm. Um, so, there you go. Now, you know, I, this one I got to say, I, well, I just saw this pop up before I was getting ready for the show. I don't know how I missed this. All the Sega arcade games that made their way to the Sega Master System. Bo, tell us about this one. Yeah, so this comes to us from the one and only Chris Folds, oh. which I must I must relate a humorous story. I don't know if you saw this on Discord or not, but you know, no. Chris just started a new job at a, at a rather large business in the UK, a rather large technology company. Yeah, and uh, he was listening to uh, and uh, and he was in a meeting, you know, in a, some sort of an all hands meeting. And when it got to him, and they were like Chris, and when and some guy in the room said. Chris Folds. He knew. <laughs> he knew. <laughs> so that we had a listener in the office. That's right. That's I right. I love that. Well, this looks great, Bo. I don't. I didn't. This snuck past me. So I guess Folds is playing all the Sega arcade games that got a ma Master System port. Right. That's right. awesome. I'm going to watch the and, crap uh, out of that. One of the uh, Sun Team actually comments on this. Fantasy Zone Two was actually a Master System original that was later ported to the arcade. I bet that didn't happen too often, where a game from the Master System goes back and becomes an arcade game. Pretty I love cool. It. Good stuff. Good for you, Folds. It looks great. Keep up the good work, man. Everyone, check that out. That looks great. Now, here's a little something that got. I guess this we just kind of shuffled this in, but actually, it did pretty good. I'm surprised. So. Uh, just for fun, I played hours and hours of arcade games. I mean, that's pretty, <laughs> it's sort of, I just got, to, I put all my, turned all my crap on. In fact, I didn't know when I was going to stop or how long I was going to go. And so I just played loads and loads of arcade games. So if you want to see me play loads and loads uh, of arcade games while talking to myself in the chat, you're in. I mean, I play everything from, I play Elevator Action, I got some Donkey Kong in there. I know I played some Jungle Hunt. Stun Runner. Wizard of War. No, nobody talks about Stun Runner that much. I always thought that was a pretty cool game, but I love Stun Runner. You know, some Zookeeper. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I flipped over to one to uh, Dave's channel. He was doing a live stream, and sure enough, he's leads. He's playing Zookeeper. So there's plenty of Zookeeper fans out there. So if you want to watch the, your your buddy, your good pal, amigo Aaron, play some arcade games, bam, you're in. Now speaking of your good buddies, oh, this right here, boat. Tell the people what we got here. All right, so uh, we have a uh, you know a newer contributor to the YouTube channel, our own Paul, aka Hermsky. Yeah, uh, Paul is a huge ZX Spectrum guy. He brings to the table a body of knowledge that we can't even approach. And uh, this is his latest video. This is exploring vintage type-in games for the ZX Spectrum. Basically, what Paul does is he gives you a little a uh, little of his own history with type-in programs. He kind of thumbs through the book a little bit, tells you about what's in there, and then he actually types in one of these programs and sees if it works. Now, he doesn't actually type it in in real time because, I mean, this is not slow TV Amigos version. He gets but he does. He, he, <laughs> he, yeah, he, he, he puts it in there, and then he sort of fast-forwards time a little bit, and then he runs it, and then he plays the game. So there's, I don't think there's a lot of content uh, on, on YouTube about these type-in games and tons and tons and tons of people use these things back in the day because this is how you got new games. You know, you got a book or you got a magazine, you typed in the program and away you went. So thank you to Hermsky for, for putting this up here and I hope he does more of these. You know, I got to tell you something and I can't be the only one that shook their fist in rage when that first round of rats ate that wheat. Those bums. Because I didn't know there were rats in the game. And so he fed the... The first year, Hernsky's people ate like freaking kings, man, in that game. They were all, they were using wheat to, as clothes. They were sleeping on it. And then the rats came. And the rats really screwed them big time. It was brutal. I loved it, though. Good stuff. That was great stuff from the Herm. I give that a Herm firm 10 out of 10, Boat. Yes, absolutely. Me. Now, here we go. Speaking of, uh, uh, of a genius type, bam. I haven't got to see this yet, unfortunately, because I had to work. This is our buddy, Frodo. And Frodo gets his ColecoVision on. I can't wait to see this, because you know me, but I'm a big fan of the ColecoVision. 
Yeah, uh, man. Frodo streams are always gold. Have you played that game, by the way? No, no. That's right up your alley, Boat. That's a little. Yeah, I remember you guys covered you guys covered it on uh, on ARG, right? Oh it's, man, uh, there's another good one. BC's Quest for Tires. Love that. I game. have played that. I have Red played Runner. That. That's a great game. That's a great game. Boulder you know, the Dash. ColecoVision is is probably the most solid because it's a smaller library. It's probably got the greatest percentage of just top tier titles of any of the you know first generation consoles. It didn't the only thing that lets it down is the controller. To it. Yeah, and it was capable. You know, it's so funny yeah. that we cover so many systems on ARG that are similar, very similar to the uh, ColecoVision, but they just don't have the games it does. It's I mean the hardware is right. very similar. You know, but right. <laughs> but uh, and I'm assuming Fredo was using his. Uh, Fredo, were you using your uh, Mister? I'm assuming on this. Yeah, yeah, Looks it's great. right there in the uh, right there in the description. And there is the uh, there's the game that made that that put the click of on the map, Boaster. Uh, the packing game to end all packing games. Donkey that that packing launched a thousand ships. Oh, if it man. wasn't for the atom and all of the completely you know uh, ill timed decisions made around the atom, we might be playing you know the ColecoVision right up there with the Xbox and the PlayStation and the Switch. I love my atom. It's right here, and <laughs> I had to modify the heck out of it. It could break at any moment, <laughs> boat. But you're but otherwise all 55 I agree with you. pounds of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hey, it does a good job on output. It really does. It does. It's way better than the ClickVision I've got. So anyway, good stuff there for Frodo. Frodo's live streams are always top shelf, Boat. We, yeah. we love his stuff. You got anything to add? Hey, what did you and uh, Neil get up to this week? You want to talk about I'm that? I'm glad you asked. Yeah, uh, we talked about the long lost uh, Game Boy PDA. Did you ever have a PDA back in the day, Aaron? No, no, I didn't have one. You never had a Palm Pilot or anything? No. Pfft, are you kidding? I was... I'm not made a wad. I was, you know, even when I was a kid, I remember going to Radio Shack when I was a kid and I saw this little handheld device that had baseball statistics in it. You know what I'm talking about? Have you have you seen one of these things before? Yes. It was like the size of a business card, but of course it was thicker and it yep. had a little two line display and you could type in any baseball player's name and it would give you his statistics. And I thought, Oh my gosh, this is freaking star Wars, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so w when PDAs came out, um, you know, I, I had to get one, I had to get one. So I got, but before then I saw this spread in 1992 in Nintendo power, this thing called the work boy, it was a two page spread and the keyboard was laid out across the two pages. So you could sort of imagine typing on it. And when I say imagine typing on, it, I mean, pretend like you're typing on it. Cause I did that constantly. Okay. Nerd. So anyway, people thought that this thing was never released. They thought that, you know, maybe they made a, a copy of it and it was somewhere deep in the, in the, the Nintendo vault, but it turns out, that the CEO of the company that manufactured it kept one of the, the prototypes. And so there's this guy on YouTube and he wrote to the guy and he's like, Hey, can I try and make it work? And he's like, yeah. And so he sent it over to him. And uh, it turns out that it needed a cartridge to make it work. Uh, just the, the unit itself wasn't enough. But do you remember Aaron earlier in the summer, there was this huge Nintendo leak where all this source code and stuff made its way onto the internet. Do you remember that? I do remember that. Yes. It was a huge story. Well, anyways, part of that leak, the ROM for the Workboy was included in that. So he was able to burn that ROM onto a cartridge and load it up and go. And so the Workboy has been resurrected. So that was that was sort of the the big story uh, uh, this week on this week in retro. But we also talked about the uh, the uh, the Souk competition, the shoot 'em up construction kit for the C sixty four. Oh yeah, is holding its its annual competition. There's a new Acorn. Uh, book out there, Acorn, A World in Pixels, and they've also rediscovered a lost Tomb Raider that was originally supposed to be reskinned for yeah. uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah. That project fell through. They reskinned it again, Aaron. This game was reskinned twice, this time for the National Treasure movie. Remember that that <laughs> that gem of cinema? I didn't see that one. I'm not going to lie to you, but I know about it, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, a good week over on uh, This Week in Retro. You can check that out over on the This Week in Retro YouTube channel. Very good, Bo. Very good. Sounds great. All right, Aaron. Let's go. Let's dive deep. Or to use a phrase I hate, let's get stuck into the Amiga News for this week. Amiga News. All right, Aaron. We're going to kick it off with uh, let's see here. I oh, we've got uh, the Lemon Amiga. Aaron yes, has sir. been relaunched. Remember, Lemon went through some tough times uh, a couple weeks ago. They got hacked. 
a bunch of passwords got out there. It was, yeah. a, it was a bad time. Well, I think Lemon took this opportunity to take stock of itself and relaunch in a new and better way. And so Lemon Amiga has a, a brand new layout. It's much more, uh, I wouldn't really call it modern. I think they moved up from web 1.0 to web 2.0. Uh, but it's it's still an improvement over the last one. Uh, they've made it much, much easier to access forum posts to post reviews. Plus, they've got the same database that we literally could not do the show without. Uh, we, yeah. you know, the Lemon is, is, is an indispensable resource. Yeah. So kudos to Kim Lemon. I'm not sure how involved Kim Lemon is anymore after talking to a couple folks at Amiga Ireland. I think he's sort of the figurehead, but there's there's the real action goes on behind the scenes uh, of uh, Lemon Amiga. So make sure if you haven't been in there in a while, check it out. Uh, Lemon is, is one of the top, top sites uh, for Amiga fans. Very good. Uh, up next, Amiga Bill, the Guru Meditation, has released a brand new video, Aaron, and this is all about the GoX floppy drive replacement. You know, we just got done talking about the uh, the the floppy drive emulator that yeah. is uh, that 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 Edu makes. There's the GoTech, the trusty GoTech. This is sort of the next generation of all that stuff. You know, so what what this is, yeah. And I watched this today. You know, Bill is one of these guys, he's just like RMC. You've got guys that just, they, they know what they're doing when it comes to making a video. And uh, and he breaks this thing down. Basically, what this thing is, is it functions the same as a GoTech. The difference is it's not so big and bulky. It is actually manufactured to fit inside of an Amiga 500, of an Amiga 1200, without having to do things to the case. You mean like this one? Yes. Yeah. Just like that. So that is, uh, so Bill basically talks about, you know, the, all of the features, there's a buzzer in there that, that mimics the sound of an Amiga hard drive, which he, or the, the floppy drive, moving, which he really likes. Ignore that. There's an OLED display that, uh, that, that, that is really cool that it actually, it extends out sort of like what you did with the GoTex that you've installed Aaron, where you have an extension cable, it runs up and you put that display right on top of the machine itself. So uh, I yeah. think they probably looked at your Amiga 600 and said, "Man, this is what we need to do," and they 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 copied that in the GoX. Well, here's so the funny Bill... thing about the GoX. Okay, I've had okay. one for like a year, mm -hmm. so I was surprised to see this come out like it was brand new hardware. I was like, I was watching this well, video. It's like you got to see this is, new I, item. <laughs> I believe that this is a new thing. This is the GoX on pills. Which uh -huh. I believe has uh, has has uh, it can be controlled with your keyboard and can display on your monitor. So yeah, I think that the Go X is old. The Go X on pills may be new. He he didn't hook that part up because he said it would it mm -hmm. require you to get in there and solder points on your board, which I don't blame him. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, I can tell you uh, the little rotary dial thing that he's piddling with. That's mm -hmm. way better. The only thing that worries me is it's uh, is it, it, how long will that thing last? It just sure, I mean, I'm not, it sure. doesn't feel flimsy. It just I'll, I'll you worry. just wonder about things like that. Parts wear down, yeah, yeah. And also, the, I will say the beeper and stuff, it works great. Uh, uh, it sounds cool. It lets you know what's going on. The little screen works great. Mm -hmm. uh, I got this thing. It's funny. Uh, I was in. I was trying to get a GoTech for the eight for the twelve hundred. After I took the one out of it, gave it, put it in the six hundred, which you've got. And uh, uh, I was like, "Hey, this is three dollars cheaper," <laughs> and it and this screen looks pretty cool. Go, yeah, egg. yeah. I mean, why would you? <laughs> I I don't understand. And maybe you know because you you know a lot about these things. Why would you get a GoTech and not a GoX? You would not is the answer because okay. the GoTechs okay. are old and these are these are, these are this is next to evolution of them. I mean, right. listen, the GoTech just sort of has that name recognition. That's why people know there, about it. But this is really the better device. Yeah, there's probably some geek that could tell you reasons why the GoTech's better for some, you know, I don't know, maybe it's for, so you can put it in your synthesizer or some crap. But all I can tell you is, I didn't have, uh, trust me, I'm no genius. I got it because it was cheap. GoEck was cool. It came with that little screen. And I was like, hey, this looks great. I'll put this in the 1200. And it, when it worked great, it installed easy. I only had to cut away, I don't know, six or seven internal parts. No, I'm just kidding. Didn't have to cut nothing, so that was disappointing. But it went in good, you know. I, now, in terms of the ability to control the uh, control the stuff through the keyboard, you know, with the mm -hmm. with the pills part, right, uh, I, right. That's that's neat. I won't. I would probably never use that because they're in the sets. It's sitting right there. 
Uh, but if yeah. I could, but I'm having not seen the software or anything, it may be awesome once you get all that stuff installed. I don't I don't know. But yeah, right, so right. yeah, but I was surprised because I mean, like as far as I know, uh, the I mean, and it's funny because even when I bought this and, and all the time since then, I've never heard of anyone talking about these things. So I don't know. I don't. It's not like I'm a genius. I just I, I don't know why. But so yeah, and of course, Bill is awesome. It, it's a great video. Uh, yeah. yeah, and and the thing about you know the thing about all of this retro stuff is. This was new to me. I didn't know that you. I didn't know that you had it, or maybe you told me and I forgot. But yeah. it's evergreen. You know, people people are constantly discovering this stuff, and you know, when you see it as presented as well as Bill does it, it's 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 worthwhile, even if it's not you know the the newest thing on the block. There you go. All right, we're moving on to our final story, and Aaron, I bet you're going to wonder why I chose this story to post on the Amigos because. This is Nick Morantis's blog for the Tandy Color Computer 3. This is his new game Zero Hour that he's, he's working on for the Coco. And I bet you're wondering, well, why? what does this have to do with the Amiga? Well, I will tell you, Aaron. I know. Uh, if you go, if you, well, maybe you can tell us then. No, go go ahead. ahead. All right. So uh, apparently, Nick is using a program called Brilliance 2 on his Amiga to create the game tiles for this game. Yeah. For. Uh, zero hour. So how cool is that, that the Amiga is still being used in game development, not only for the Amiga, but on a completely different platform on the Coco. It's our two worlds colliding, Aaron. I believe Brilliance was, a, uh, as I recall, was a, like a, sort of like a deluxe paint style program back in the day. Okay. I, I also think Nick, uh, I'm pretty sure Nick mentioned that he used the Amiga to do some of the sounds in some of his games too. So, mm. uh, uh, so that's kind of, that's kind of neat. Hey, I love it. I love and, and Nick's great. I, but wasn't Zero Hour, someone out there could correct me, but wasn't Zero Hour the movie that was uh, parodied by Airplane? I do not know. I've never even seen Airplane. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. Oh. God, I can't believe that boat. My God. You need to go watch I know it's that. the one with the airplane. Yes, yeah, I remember the the the, the movie was it parodied it so closely that they just, before they even made airplane they just went and bought the rights to Zero Hour. It was a movie that came on like on the late 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 show, and they'd seen it so many times that that's where they got the idea to actually parody it, and make airplane. So there you go. All right, well, that'll correct me. That's that's going to wrap it up for this week's Amiga News, Aaron. It's sort of a light news week, but that's to be expected at this time of year. Yeah. Let's roll on, shall we, to Vegetables Deluxe. Yeah, okay, here we go. So, Vegetables Deluxe Boaster. Now, you know, this is one we'd heard about for a while, uh, but I had never, I have to say, I, and I've seen it play, but I've never played it. H had you had you had any uh, experience with this before we stuck it on the Amiga? No, no. Yeah. So, this game uh, it, it was uh, released in 2019 for the Amiga. This thing got released on a bunch of different systems. I, I know there's a C64 uh, version of it. Uh, now the the differences between vegetables and vegetables deluxe uh, are I'm not one hundred percent. I have not played the original. Have you played the original vegetables boat? No, I haven't either. So I will say this had several different game uh, play uh, uh, options, and so I'm assuming that w b the originals didn't have them. So I as I figure so. Uh, again, this was done by Mike Richman, uh, and he is uh, one. He was, uh, I guess, he's part of the gang over at Double Sided Games, uh, and this is a puzzle game, puzzle tile game. People had a word for this uh, in the Discord. I think they were calling it Match Three Games. Yeah, the, Match Three is the proper name for this genre. So now, this is a genre of game that I guess is big on cell phones. Is that right, Bo? And, and yeah. Poor... Oh, it started out. It started out on PCs. Uh -huh. There was a game called Bejeweled okay, that was a, really that. It was PopCap's first hit. Right. It was a Match Three game. Um, and uh, but it's of course it's taken off through games like Candy Crush and stuff that are on on cell phones because it's the perfect cell phone game. You can sort of just do it while you're wasting time. Yeah. Right. Fair you go. So this thing made its way over to the Amiga, I believe. Uh, in fact, according to the website here. This was written in, in Blitz Basic, uh, and it requires 512K of memory. Not too bad, but pretty light. But this yeah, is an yeah. incredibly light game, uh, in all honesty. So what do you do in this? Well, it's pretty simple. You've got several different options of how you can play this. Uh, you can play it against the clock, You uh, which I didn't play it that much, because I will say this game, one of the things I actually like about this is it's a game where you can be playing it, and then you can just get up and leave <laughs> for mm -hmm. a while, come back. 
they've got a game called like I think it's called like supermarket or shopping or something like grocery shopping where you where you actually have goals of the different vegetables you're supposed to knock out. Why don't you explain the because you could probably do it better than me. Explain the gameplay premise in this. What is the what is the how does this work? Okay. Well, but before we go any further, we we did have some uh, real time follow up from the chat. Uh, apparently, vegetables. The original game was only available on the C sixty four. There you go. Vegetables Deluxe was released for the C sixty four, the Amiga, the ZX Spectrum, and the Vic twenty. Very so good. That's, oh, that, right. That's the, the Vic difference. got a copy yeah, too. Yeah, the that's Vic got a neat. copy. Yeah. Neat. So, this game basically you're you're greeted with a screen full of different vegetables that are represented as tiles. Okay, and your job is to drag a tile into position to make it match up with at least three other tiles. If you are able to match up more than three tiles, uh, well, then uh, you get extra junk, extra stuff, good stuff happens. So whenever you match three tiles, those tiles disappear and extra tiles slide down from the top to replace them. OK, this is an endless game. It's just like Tetris. There's no there's no ending to it. Um, what you do is eventually you're going to run out of places where you can match three tiles together, either horizontally or vertically. And then you have to shuffle the screen. OK, and the amount of shuffles that you get sort of work like your lives. OK, so uh, when you match four, uh, when you match four vegetables, you get a, I believe what happens is you get the whole row disappears. Yeah, yeah. If you match five vegetables, which seems very, very difficult to do, you get a new shuffle. Okay. So it's essentially like getting an extra life. And so what you do is you basically just sort of look at the screen, you analyze how you can get the most points by matching the most, you know, and there are, there, I guess there are, uh, there's mushrooms, there's peppers, there's carrots. I think there's a potato. There's an eggplant. Do you know the British word for eggplant, Aaron? Uh, I don't. It's like aubergine or something like that. Really? It's a weird word. It's a weird word, and that. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. What is so the, anyway, yeah. you got your eggplant. Listen, oh, sorry, if it's good enough for eggplant wizard, it's good enough for me. They didn't call him aubergine wizard. Um, anyway. Uh, now, there are things that get in your way. There are these things that they look like... Um, Oh, uh, what do they look like? They, they, they're Lego sort of bricks. like Lego blocks. Yeah. yeah. And they cannot be matched. They're just in your way all the time. There's no way to get rid of them. So that sort of impedes your progress too. Like you said, the, the different modes of the game are just variations on the same theme. None of the modes alters the gameplay itself. The gameplay itself is unchanging. The only thing that changes is the goals. Like in the in the shopping mode, you have a certain number of each vegetable to collect before you move on to a new screen. In classic mode, you just play, you just match until you can't match anymore. In countdown mode, you're running up against the clock. Again, just like you, I don't know why you'd want to play countdown mode unless you just like stressful activity. Because part of the fun, at least for me in these games, is these are games where you can sit back pour yourself a cold one and just sort of look at it and have fun looking at the animations. You know, one of the things about the vegetables is, you know, that they're, they are faces, the vegetables have faces. We should, we should mention that because that's important in the original vegetables game. There was a hint system where every so often the vegetables, like a vegetable that you could move to create a score would blink. Well, in this version, if you click the hint button, the vegetable will sort of wink at you, you know, it's winking at you. And, and so that, that's kind of neat. Um, all the different the, the the different facial expressions on the the vegetables are amusing. Uh, this game has a pretty good soundtrack. You know, it's kind of it's got a bop and tune. Uh, if you get tired of the music, you can turn it off. Uh, there is only well. one uh, there is only one tune in this game, which is slightly disappointing. You know, a lot of the best classic puzzle games, at least for you know the consoles like Doctor Mario and Tetris, you have multiple music choices, and it is further disappointing because the guy that wrote this game is actually a musician. I would have liked to have seen some more of his chops on display there, but maybe it has to do with the fact that this game fits on a single floppy. Who knows? But at any rate, Aaron, that's vegetables in a nutshell. It's a match three game. If you've played one, you've played them all. I I haven't played one. I mean, I, I maybe I have, but it's I I found the gameplay in this. I'm the only person on earth that found this fairly fresh. I mean, it's it was. I didn't take me long to figure out what was going on. You know, uh, I should mention that the game also, aside from the mode you mentioned, has a has a thing called casual mode. 
I don't know what that that seems like. Uh, uh, they could have caught coma mode almost because you can play on that one for. I mean, it just it's super slow. Well, uh, I mean, it's not it's not slow or fast. It's not a time. No, I mean, it's just game. it's like nothing stops you from. I mean, there are hardly any Legos that come down. So you can kind of sort of keep going for a long time on casual mm-hmm. mode. I like, like I said, the only mode I didn't play that much was the clock one, just because I, by the time I got, it was the last option, and the time I got to it, I'd already played the other one so much, I didn't want to have to be fast, basically. Also, I was incredibly slow. Did I mention that? What You were mentioning that, the, the hint system in this, okay? If you click the little hint button in the corner, like Boat said, the the right automatically, the faces will, the couple of the faces you can use to uh, make a puzzle piece will blink at you, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, something else I noticed that I don't like, if you take long enough, they'll just do that anyway, even if you don't hit the button. Oh, really? No okay, getting. I didn't realize I that. I didn't like because that would always piss me off. Mm-hmm. And also, it made me feel they, dumb. At that point, at that point, they're admitting, they're telling you you're stupid. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. Yeah, I would. That would get on my nerves. I too. was infuriated, and and the, and here's what makes it worse: but the fact that you didn't see that, that mm-hmm. tells me that I'm a real idiot, right? Right, right for taking so long. I actually, uh, you're right. The different modes are sort of irrelevant because it's the same basic bear, homie. It's the same game, just with a different you know thing. Um, I never matched five in a row. I can tell you that. Uh, also, I've matched four plenty of times, and some and occasionally you'll get a bit where you can take out a row and a column. That's real exciting. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but it is an inevitable march to your death. Um, I found the uh, uh, I found the vegetables uh, not that attractive. <laughs> they're weird looking. I guess they're Listen, vegetables. Man, you're no basket of fruit yourself. What is that red thing? The red a, face? It's a, no, it's a pepper. It's a that's pepper. a pepper. Okay. Yeah, it's a sad pepper. Yeah, well, whatever, man. I would Do you like know to why see the pepper's g- sad. Why? Why? People are constantly, they're constantly mistaking him for a tomato. Oh, okay. There you go. That's, well, that's truth. That's lore. I read that in a Mike Richmond interview. Actually, I think I, I think, no, I take it back. Tenmark did a review on this game back in the day. Yeah. And, uh, or maybe it wasn't back in the day cause this is pretty new, but, uh, he, uh, and, uh, he actually interviewed Mike Richmond and asked him some questions. And that was one of the questions is why is the pepper sad? Well, oh, good to know. But yeah. The, 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 so let's boil it down here. Let's boil the vegetables down. By the way, the, wh- you don't like the vegetables that you're putting I, it out there. No, I well, I, they could have named. I would rather have seen a game called Carbs or or like uh, uh, goodies, candy, Grease. and really, I'll be honest with you. I, I I'm I'm only being partially uh, sarcastic there. I would have came up with a more exciting. Pa- tile set than this well okay okay well let's let's hash this out what would you put for your tile set well i don't know what's been previously done to be honest doesn't matter so if i'm releasing this commercially for money i wouldn't do this but i think it'd be cool to have like some amiga like characters be the tile faces or something i think that would have been more fun uh or at but at the bare minimum i would have used candy something that it's something that's more appealing than vegetables and vegetables i mean i know hey some people love them but you know not yeah, I, well. Not what I want to use, but anyway, that would have changed the gameplay, and the gameplay in this—I mean, really, this is this is as close. How can I put this? And this is meant to be complimentary. This is as close to a PD game concept as you can get, but they've put enough razzle dazzle in it to where I can see you could make some money off of it. How's that? Does that make any sense? I mean, sure. it's you're matching three things. You're right. There's one song. I like the song at first, then I enjoyed it. That I tolerated it, that I hated it, that I muted it because it never mm-hmm. stopped. It just—it's right. much like the game. It was a relentless tune that never ended. I now, I'm not ragging on it because I'm not gonna lie. I played this game a lot. I mean, I played it for hours <laughs> because it's a game you can play while you're doing other stuff. You mm-hmm. can see why this game got over on cell phones because it's the perfect game for that. You know, just grab the mouse and screw and screw around. Uh, and I I did have a good time with it, but I mean. This isn't like we've we've done games in the show like Sim Life and stuff where you read this huge pamphlet or a huge book. There's games that came with huge novels. This is the game. This is the so on the other side of the spectrum. You can yeah. set any idiot in front of it, even one like me. They hear play this and they will get some mild amusement out of it. I mean, that's pretty much the long and short of it, Boat. I disagree with you about the tile set. Okay. I think that the tile set is great. I like the idea of vegetables with faces. I think the thing that's neat about vegetables is they all have very recognizable shapes. 
so you know what they are. I mean, there are some like the pepper. You might think it's a tomato. The the mushroom kind of looks like a key, but you you sort of you know that they're all vegetables, okay? But they've got different faces, and the different faces have different expressions on them, okay? It's like freaking Snood. Remember Snood? Yeah. No. You don't remember Snood with affection, I see. I don't. See, I love Snood. You know why I love Snood? Because it had all those faces on it. The faces were funny. They'd smile at you. They'd scowl. That's what I like in a game. Give me some faces. I don't That's know. all I got to say. I, look, first of all, these get the 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 mushrooms and the the green things and the gray things are almost virtually identical except for the color. There's a lot. I mean, it's just this is not radical. Also, we're this is arguing over garbage. This this is irrelevant. I would like to have seen different pile, uh, pieces on the tiles, but it's irrelevant to the game. Because it would have played the same. You could have had me sure. on there, smiling well, and grinning I mean, yeah, and dancing. That, that, at some point, though, you have to put some personality in your game. If you just had colors up there, for example, like this game would not be nearly as much fun as if you had something on the tiles. It's like Mahjong, you know, or whatever we, we call Mahjong that's not really Mahjong. You know what I'm talking about. you got to yeah. have something on those tiles. I don't know how to play that. I wish I did. It looks, it looks fancy, but I don't know how to play it. So... I uh, uh, was just looking over the page before we went live here, and I noticed at the bottom, I wanted to mention this, that uh, he, he credits some play testers, and one of the guys he credits is our good buddy, Mr. Cola. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I did notice that. And the, the, this is the same guy that did Black Dawn Rebirth, the music for Black Dawn Rebirth. So this guy's a very accomplished composer, and apparently, you know, it, it, you got to have some skill. You can't just throw a game like this together with no ability. You know, this guy, he's a he's a multi-talented guy. He does programming, just like David Whitaker. Remember, we've been talking about him lately. Same deal. Let me ask you a question, Boat, because this is one area that I don't have an answer for. Um, how similar, it, it, take out the vegetables and all the other crap, right? Boil the game down. How similar is this? Are there games on the phone or on the old PCs that are exactly like this? I mean, is this a clone, effectively? Or is this something, is there anything fresh here? No, there's nothing fresh here. Okay. That's I mean, all these games are exactly the, the way that it's sort of like slot machines. You know how there's like bonus games and slot machines, but at the end of the day, you know, you're just trying to get things across or in a diagonal. Yeah. It's the same sort of thing. Um, what, what makes this game unique is that it's a new game for the Amiga, and I think the vegetables look cool. <laughs> Actually, I take it back. The shopping mode, I don't. I don't know if I haven't played enough match three games to know if that's like a thing, but I would imagine with as many match three games as there are out there that there would be a, a, a variant where a goal would be to collect a certain number of colors or whatever they are. So, right. I mean, I don't play, I don't worry. I never got into that. I missed all the, uh, you know, I never worried. It was a phone guy, as you know. And so, and by the time I got in, the games had become just like regular games. It wasn't just like all this puzzle stuff. So I didn't know, but I had a feeling that this was just a, a game that had been done before on for the Amiga. But hey, I will say this: if you're gonna do a game that's been done before, like do a good job. And it is. There's I, there's not a darn thing wrong with this game. I, I don't know what. Do you know what this is selling for? Let me see if I can find out. Yeah, they, uh, yes, because I bought it. How much should we pay for this boat? Name your own price. Oh, bam! Now that's see, that's the way you do it. You yeah. know, I think that's a good that's a good deal. And listen, it's it's definitely like I said, it's it's something if you're into puzzles. Or you just want to have something new for your Amiga? I think it's I think it'd be a good pickup, Boaster. Um, yeah, absolutely. This is uh, I, if you like. First of all, if you like match three games and you like the Amiga, this is a no brainer. This is a, an insta purchase. Uh, but even if you are not, you know, if you're not a match three person and you just want a cool chill out game that does have some different play modes that you can experiment with, you could do a whole lot worse than 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 Vegetables Deluxe. I would be much more critical of this game if they went the old tiny little slug route with the pricing and tried to get over, you know, twenty four ninety nine for an ADF. This is, this is the way to do it. Yeah. Um, I uh, looked this up on the old lemon boat and, uh, the lemon actually has a score on the original vegetables, but not on vegetables deluxe, but let's go with that. Yeah. Uh, they, they gave it 4.29. Of course you've got seven people voting. This is real new. So mm -hmm. I would take that score and, and just, and just throw it out. Me too. Did Me you get too. any Discord hot Discord action on this? We did. We did get some Discord action. Uh, let's see. We've got the one and only Chris Folds writes in. He says, a match three game. This genre has been done to death on mobile with sick, slick visuals and super effects. 
This Amiga rendition discards that tried and trusted formula and as a result suffers. Firstly, there are precious few sound effects or visual rewards for completing sequences. No mega bonus flashy stuff here. Secondly, an 8x8 grid. This That is way, way too many. Starter level should be 5x5 five five at most. And lastly, it's all mouse-driven for some unknown reason, removing that lean-back experience. Rarely for an Amiga game, it has music in-game. Thankfully, you can mute it as it grates quickly. Overall, I found it a bland experience, but kudos for making an Amiga game. That's one thing that they probably could have done to, to spice things up a little bit is yeah. change the size of the grid. Um, I didn't think about that, but starting off with a smaller grid and slowly expanding, that would at least give you, you know, something to, but like you said, it's so hard to die that, you know, a five by five grid would be even easier to complete. So I will I say I, just me personally, I can't tell you the number of times that I, I would get rock and I'd get rolling and then I would hit the wall. Mm -hmm. And, and w that's a big, that is a big grid when you're missing like one thing, you know, I'm not sure I would have. I, I think I would have also liked an option where the hint button would just go away. Just yeah. I don't even want the sort of like it's sort of like a mulligan, right? Yeah. Uh, I would. I, and also, again, at the fact that after you sit there for a while, they just automatically start doing it. I don't like that either. So that's all things. Those things I would not do. Yeah, I would definitely get rid of the auto hint and then give you the option to get rid of the hint button altogether. Both of those are sound sound suggestions mm -hmm. from you. Uh, Pixels of Dawn writes. My experience with Match 3 games is pretty limited, aside from a bit of Candy Crush, but I had a lot of fun with this one. It's visually simple, sure, but I much prefer a cleaner look with the cute blinking vegetables, and the effects when you match 4 or 5 are satisfying. The music is excellent, with the option to turn it off, and the different game modes switch your strategies away from the normal Match 3 fare. It could definitely do with a bit more polish and sound effects, but it's a fun game for what it is, 7 out of 10. So a positive review... From Mister at Dawn. You know, I will say something else. I, they do have a cool effect when you blow up a a, a column or a row or boat. Mm -hmm. a, it, there's a big explosion and the screen shakes. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that, I didn't think was, the effects were too bad. Really, I, what would have helped this game? Um, what would have what a mile for this game is having, uh, is having had the uh, uh, some more tunes. You know, the tunes add a lot to it. And maybe even have some, like, a few more backgrounds or something. Something, mm -hmm. you know, just like Tetris does. I mean, Tetris doesn't right. reinvent the wheel with every level, but they just do something. So when you're staring at this thing for an hour, you're not just seeing the same thing over and over, hearing the same thing over and over. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Variety is the key to uh, to, to puzzle games. Having having some variety in the background, the music, something to, to, to take your mind off the fact that you're literally repeating the same actions mindlessly for hours. Yeah. So, Aaron, we've closed the book on vegetables, but let's open the book on some of the stuff that's been going on over in our Amigos community. Aaron, uh, we've had probably one of the hot most hotly contested high score battles of all time going down on the uh, the Amigos high score channel over on Discord. I knew that this was going to be a barn burner because everybody loves Parasol Stars, but I was not expecting I was not expecting a score like this. So Z9K9 has a score of 1,611,240. This may well be the high score, the world high score for this game, Aaron. I've looked around, and I cannot find any score as high as the score that Z9K9 posted. We have some, we have such talented people He's in our Discord. Good, yeah, yeah. I couldn't stand that game to play to a million. I would, I would, I, I, I wasn't as big a fan of Parasol Stars as you were. Yeah, I love Parasol Stars. Uh, and over on the Specky High Score ch uh, page, we are doing the uh, the new game, much like Vegetables was a new game. We're doing more tea, Vicar. And uh, let's see here. Hard. We've got a uh, high score, and I posted I posted scores for both of these games. I did much better in Parasol Stars than I did for More T Vicar, although I'm in the same place in both of them, next to last. Uh, but Z9K9 again leads the charge uh, with 49,850, followed uh, by Mitsuyama uh, coming up in second place. So uh, if you want to jump in and you're a member of our Discord community, remember all it takes is a dollar a month to uh, join the Discord through Patreon. Patreon, uh, you can jump on in and take part in all the hilarity. Um, yeah, so that's that's sort of what's been going on over on the uh, on the on the on the Discord, Aaron. Um, we did get 
uh, some new uh, supporters this past week. Uh, it's been a, been a good week for the Amigos community. We've added quite a few folks to our to the team. Uh, we have a new Amigos VIP, Aaron. Uh, this is a new, relatively new uh, rank within Patreon that has come to light. Uh, basically, if you're an Amigos <laughs> VIP, it not came only to light, yeah, it's amazing it how those things light. are hidden in there. I never it knew. It is. It is. One day, just the, the, the scales fall from your eyes, and there it is. Um, you know, not only do you become a member of the Amigos Game Selection Committee and help the committee choose the games for us to play every week, but you also get a room of your own on Discord where you can talk about whatever the heck you want to talk about. Sounds sketchy, uh, he, dude. Yeah. Who, well, who knows what's going sketchy. on in those? You don't know. Uh, and so we want to welcome Daniel Crabtree. Uh, Dan, uh, my, my friend in real life. Uh, like I said on Discord now that both Hat Chad and Dan are on Discord, that represents 100% of my real-life friends. So it's so great. Um, we got more friends so, than that, Boat. No. Give me a break. So anyway, we welcome Dan. Dan, veteran, 20-year veteran of the United States Navy. Uh, oh. Played yeah, played trombone in the Navy band, was stationed in Japan. My whole Japan, every story I tell about my Japan trip, when, I'm, when all the retro gaming stuff, I went to see Dan, and Dan was with me. Okay. Was so, Dan on uh, a ship or a sub? Where was he, Boat? He was he was mostly stationed on land, but he did have some sea deployments as the, the naval band was called out the various places. I'm gonna be asking him a lot of questions about the Navy. Oh, well he he knows a lot about it, I can tell you that. Um he actually just posted a video on our Funky Tunes channel of him live on Estonian television, Aaron, singing Uptown Funk with the Navy band. <laughs> So make sure you check that out. He is a VIP. <laughs> Holy <Yeah>. cow. <laughs> we also want to welcome uh, Amigos Game Selection Committee member uh, Bernard Quinn. Bernard Quinn has joined us. Uh, uh, he has been a longtime oh, yeah. uh, supporter of the channel. Um, and uh, he's recently decided to become a member of the AGSC. So uh, thank you to Help Bernard. Us for Help us out, yep. man. Yeah, pick some good games for us. Thanks for coming and up. And finally, we have two new uh, two new Amigos supporters this week, Super Fami King yeah. and Crazy Loomis. Yeah. They both have joined us this week, so we welcome them to the fold. They jumped right and, in, too. I love that. And, uh, yeah, so uh, anyway, patreon.com slash Amigos Podcast if you want to join the party. Um, now, of course, I would be remiss if I didn't thank all of our fine, fine Twitch subscribers. You know, if you if you uh, like watching the show live on Twitch every Friday night, plus the other streams that we have going on, Aaron's going to stream tonight. Tomorrow we're going to do Ask the Amigos, uh, and so you can tune in for that. Uh, if you want to support the show through Twitch, you're welcome to do so. That also gives you access to our Discord channel. Uh, you can join the, the party with Rule of Thirds, L. Curtis B., Retro Jerry, Frodo and L, Mitsuyama, Christian Russell, Negsol, Da, DA Crabs, <laughs> MTG, Macintosh Librarian, The Slow Norris, Pints and Amiga, Captain Chaos DK, Lamatza, Jigglebox, Wild World of Retro, Wing Chun Wolf, Gary Heather, Eeyore 4077, Blue Train, Hermski, and Buck Owens. Thank you guys so much for supporting us on Twitch. Was there a guy in there named Da? It, I, it, it was it was a bomb six the bass situation there for a second. I well, couldn't figure out. I couldn't I couldn't decipher it. But then I realized it was D A or maybe it's the crabs. Oh, it's the crabs M T G, the crabs Magic the Gathering. Aaron. I'm disappointed that we don't have a supporter that just named Da, like a yeah. Russian. He's just like yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Aaron. Last week we had a bevy of uh, entries in the Patreon song contest. Lots of people wrote in with the correct answer. Last week was the Oasis tune, Live Forever. I really enjoyed doing that, getting in touch with my inner um, um, Gallagher. Yeah. So, <laughs> Get the watermelon out. Con congratulations to uh, Pixels at Dawn, Christian Russell, Hermski, Jigglebox, Paul Kitching, Mitsuyama, Bomb the Bass, Pac Billy, Chris Folds, Bundy, Lobsterminator, and Level Lord. You all got the correct answer. Well done. So this week, if you know the Patreon song, uh, send me an email at john at amigospodcast.com and I will read your name aloud on the next episode. Hit it. 
William the Discar Heavy System Z. Bundy Frag, Lord Mark Byland. Olaf Ho. Hermski Jonah, aka Simulant, Teeth and Little. Alien Breeder, Day Velociraptor. Calvary Boy, Lane Denson, Luke Hudson. John Cook, Bomb the Bass. Roshi Proto, ML Soul, Incisor, Take Me. Jurgen Mr. Cola, Daniel Williams, Bernard Lucas, Jerry Dennington, Zorglub, Commodore Kid, Reflections, I'm in Ledge, Captain Crispy, Kilobytes and Caffeine, Gary Heather, Free Lunch, Kate Fox, David Pickford, Cameron Armstrong, Andy Jones, Lobstrom and Ada, 10 Minute Amiga Retro Cast, Bernard Quinn, RMC, Tim Drew, Simon Rose, Joseph Harrison, Kyle L. Rob O'Hara, Matthew Laramore, Andy Craig, Shanzo, Bart Bid, Roland Burke, Andrew Monks. Joe the Zombie, Leaf Kevin, Alan Kabar, Checo Taylor, the Lord John Marshall, Matthew Carroll, Ricky DeRosha, Creek Dead Boy, Figgy C, the Slow North, Stephon Sorgard, Mortensen, Edvin Helen, Blendo 75, Christopher Hassel, Ravi Abbott, Chris Folds, Lauren Sharu, Graham Vepke, Adam Battersby, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Gary Hucker, Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles, Tapes from the Crypt, Josh Nadd, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, THG, Eric Nelson, Kim Tommy, Robert Stein, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Terry. Let me tell you something. The guy on the left is real good, but that dude on the right sucks. You need to get, <laughs> you need to get that guy out of here. And he I've really cheesed about the end of that song up too. Blah, 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 blah. Come on, what was that? You need he's more the, verses. He's, he's definitely the Pete best of the group. I'll tell yeah, you that. Is. Get that guy out. All right, Aaron. Next week on the Amigos, we will be back one we more will? time. What? Yep. Yeah, I was not informed. We gotta come back <laughs> and do it again. Oh, We're going to be playing. It's a game from the 90s, Aaron. Yes. It's a game called Clax. No. <laughs> Clax? Yeah. The it's arcade Klax puzzler? Time. Yeah. Oh. And so it's back to back puzzle weeks on the on the Amigos. This was suggested by Amigos Game Selection Committee member Chris Folds. So we I, thank him for voting on it. I had to fire my port, thank, my port conspiracy screen back up for that one because this thing got ported <laughs> to everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, thanks as always, everybody, for listening. Like I said, uh, we want to thank the fine folks that have joined us live in the chat this evening. We had pretty good chat going on right now. Of course, we've got our A-class moderators that wield the band hammer with abandon, Duncan Styles and Pixels of Dawn Gaming. Thank you guys so much for keeping the unruly crowd under control. We've also got Amiga Cami here, Amiga Live. Uh, we got Barkbit, Brock101, Buck Owens is with us, Christian Russell, Crazy Loomis. He's crazy. The Crabs, MTG, or Da Crabs, MTG, yes, as he was called forever. Edvin Helland, live from the Man Cave in the Frozen North, is with us. Frodo and L in the Low Countries. We got Photo Payer, Gary Heather <laughs> is with us, Jigglebox. Great Al G has woken up early to join us. Well done. Hermski is here. I am Paul H. Bossman in the house. Bossman's working hard on this next Patreon song, Aaron. Oh, I'm man. not going to lie to you. This is this is something that is is a mammoth undertaking. He a doesn't vote like a man vote, unlike uh, you know, guy on the right. Yes, yeah, I yes. L. Curtis B. has joined us. He's taken a brief respite from the Cocoa World to join Amiga Land. Uh, we've got Lord Soup with us, who was just given a gift sub from Da Crabs. Oh, da man. Crabs, MTG. Crab Soup. Mitsuyama is with us. Olav Hope, Paul, 
Kitching, Picard 2010, DeRosha, Ricky DeRosha is here. <laughs> Rob that? Flack, you don't, you like that? Uh, Rob Flack over here is here. What are you, horse shack all of a sudden? <laughs> That's, I, I try, I try. BNK, Bigger Old Pros, and Z9K9, Arcade Score Champion. What a lineup. Yeah, what a man. lineup. All right. So, next week, we will be back with Clax. Join us tomorrow, if you will, tomorrow at uh, sometime in the afternoon. Yeah, let's uh, say four. To, uh, yeah, around four for Ask the Amigos. We're going to answer Discord's questions. It's always a good time. Who knows Man. what will be asked and who knows how we'll answer. We'll see you guys next time. Until then. Adios. Adios.